This is a short video on penetrating abdominal trauma. I'll be talking about the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of abdominal trauma from a penetrating object. As in all of these videos, the color coding is listed here at the top right, and I'll be clearing all of the boxes and talking through each concept one by one as we repopulate the flowchart. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've seen the penetrating chest trauma video, the beginning is going to be quite similar. So you can have penetration from two things, two big categories. There could be other things, of course. Stab wounds and gunshot wounds. So for a stab wound, you have the thrusting action of a pointed object. This can be a knife, a broken bottle, a spear, anything else that's pointed and sharp and can cause injury. This, in this case, the tissue is lacerated and torn along the path of the object, and the depth of injury is usually greater than the width of the injury here. In a gunshot wound, you have tissue laceration and tissue being crushed along the path of the bullet. The severity of injury here is related to the kinetic energy of the bullet. If you remember from physics course, the kinetic energy can be computed as one half mv squared. M is mass, which in this case is the weight of the bullet. V is velocity, which in this case is the speed of the bullet. Both the weight and the speed of the bullet contribute to the amount of damage done because they both contribute to the kinetic energy. In gunshot wounds, you have tissue that is displaced forward and radially. This causes cavitation and pressure injury of nearby structures. And the nearby structures that are more dense, like the liver and the bone, will absorb more kinetic energy and have more injury. This is in comparison to the less dense structures like the fat or the skin, which will be relatively spared compared to the more dense organs. In any case, no matter how you get the penetrating trauma, you'll have an open wound injury with a deep but narrow entry wound. So that's penetrating abdominal trauma. Now let's work our way into the manifestations and see how this might present in a patient. The first complication, the first manifestation that's worth thinking about is hollow viscous perforation. And this is when you have a piece of the GI tract that's broken and you have full thickness loss of bowel wall integrity. This can of course be very painful and it can cause abdominal distension as your contents of your GI tract spill out into your peritoneal space or maybe your retroperitoneal space and cause inflammation. You'll have peritonitis. We'll talk about all that. And of course you'll have GI distress. You can have nausea, vomiting, you can have obstipation or really bad constipation from this as well. I mentioned peritonitis, so you'll have immediate inflammation of the surrounding peritoneum when you dump your acidic or caustic bowel contents into your peritoneum. This can make your abdominal pain worse with motion. The classic rebound tenderness might be present as well, or if you just bump into the bed of a patient who has peritonitis, they'll immediately feel pain and recoil in pain. This can also cause paralytic il ileus from the uh, inflammation, and it can also be a structural factor that prevents the, the bowel contents from moving through, so you can have ileus in multiple ways. This can also exacerbate your nausea, vomiting, and obstipation as well. And of course, if you have paralytic ileus, if your bowel is not moving, you'll have decreased or absent bowel sounds. Over time, of course, the peritonitis can cause fever. It can also cause infection in the abdomen as you're spilling your bowel contents into the otherwise sterile peritoneum. So there's also a big component of third spacing going on here. If you're losing a bunch of fluids, you're going to have very significant, uh, severe inflammation into your peritoneal space. So you're losing a lot of your blood volume into your peritoneal space with this inflammation as well. That can be one source of, of shock. We'll see there are many ways that you can get shock in this case. And this would be a hypovolemic shock from third spacing following peritonitis. In addition, the hollow viscous perforation can also contribute to the shock if you have really bad bleeding, for instance. And the symptoms of shock, just to list them out here, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and in severe cases, the patient can become pale and cyanotic. Another thing that can happen is air entering the abdomen. Air can, can enter the abdomen either from the bowel, if you have hollow viscous perforation, or from the penetrating abdominal trauma itself. When this happens, you'll have hyperresonance on abdominal percussion. If you have more air in the abdomen that's usually there, then it'll sound very hollow. It'll sound very hyperresonant when you do percussion. You can also, for instance, one example of this hyperresonance is if air gets between the diaphragm and the liver, you'll have a decrease in liver dullness on your right upper quadrant percussion. Normally when you do an abdominal exam and you're tapping over the liver, the liver is more dull than other parts of the abdomen. But if you have a decrease in liver dullness, this might be a sign of air between the diaphragm and the liver. In contrast, if you have blood in the abdomen, 
this is in contrast to air in the abdomen, you can have extra dullness on abdominal percussion. Blood, of course, is a lot more dense than air. It's going to make more of a dull sound when you're percussing the abdomen. And of course, this large volume hemorrhage into the abdomen can also cause shock. In this case, it'll be a hemorrhagic shock, so similar to hypovolemic shock, where you're losing a bunch of fluid. In addition, you can have large volume hemorrhage into other spaces as well. It might not just be into the abdomen. It could be into the retroperitoneal space and into the pelvic cavities. So your, your abdomen area has the peritoneum, the retroperitoneum, and the pelvic areas. So a lot of areas to bleed into and a lot of places to hide blood and potentially lead to hypovolemic shock. So vascular injury is another big problem that can come from penetrating abdominal trauma. And one of the big structures is, of course, the abdominal aorta, which can, of course, lead to this hemorrhage into one of these spaces. Next, it's worth talking about solid organ injury. The two big ones here are liver laceration and splenic laceration. Of course, you can have colon laceration of the ascending or descending colon as well as stomach laceration, but those are kind of encompassed by this hollow viscous perforation. So let's go ahead and look at li liver laceration. This will cause pain over the spot of the liver, which is the right upper quadrant. Splenic la laceration will cause pain on the other end, in the left upper quadrant. This should be LUQ here. And you can also have pain over the left flank and a tender epigastric area as well. Both of these can be worse with inspiration because as you inspire, you're pushing your diaphragm down into the area of the laceration, so that can cause pain. And splenic laceration in particular is known to irritate the left diaphragm, which can be referred to the left shoulder. This is worth mentioning just because it has its own specific name. It's called Kerr's sign. Next, diaphragmatic injury. This one was also mentioned in the penetrating chest trauma. Of course, the diaphragm separates the chest and the abdomen, so it could be injured from penetrating wounds to either the chest or the abdomen. In any case, the possible manifestation is the same. You can have a diaphragmatic hernia. This is when you have a piece of bowel that's poking through the defect in the diaphragm up into the chest, and this can result in shortness of breath, of course, because you now have bowel where your lungs should be expanding. You can have decreased breath sounds, again, because your lungs aren't expanding properly, and you can even hear bowel sounds in the chest. If you're listening for breathing and you hear bowel sounds, you might suspect that the bowels are where the lungs should be because of a diaphragmatic hernia. In addition, you can have bowel obstruction. So of course, when the bowel is going through the defect in the diaphragm, that bowel might be squeezed too tightly, causing it to be obstructed. This can also cause really bad constipation called obstipation, which is complete inability to pass stool or gas. Next, genitourinary trauma, and just a few last thoughts on this. This can present as blood at the urethral meatus, it can present as hematuria, it can either be gross or microscopic hematuria, and it can also present as difficulty voiding. You can of course have pain from this as well, pain in the lower abdomen pelvis area. If you have rupture of the bladder dome, which is the big round part, the anterior portion of the bladder, you can have urine leaking from the bladder into the peritoneum. This can firstly irritate the diaphragm because your urine is slightly acidic and it's not supposed to be in your, um, in, your, in, your, in your peritoneal space. In addition, when it is in your peritoneal space, your peritoneum will reabsorb your urine. So on your lab values, you can have increased BUN and increased creatinine. Remember, nitrogen, urea nitrogen like this and creatinine is supposed to be in your urine and it's meant to be excreted from the body. But if you're reabsorbing and it gets back into your bloodstream, that can manifest on your lab values. One last thing, if you have anterior urethral trauma, this is kind of moving away from the abdomen, but anterior urethral trauma can lead to scrotal hematoma. So that might be another sign of trauma to the lower abdomen or pelvis. This has been a video on penetrating abdominal trauma. I hope it was helpful and thank you for listening.